from a micro level for real estate, I think the opportunities are really great. I think the market's very balanced or balancing. It's still a seller's market. It really is in our market at least. Um, so, but I think the opportunities for buyers make it feel more balanced. And I'm excited about that because I've seen so many people not get homes and have to keep renting and just get priced out of the market. So I feel like we're going to see home ownership again alive and well, um, those opportunities. <laughs>
And the way we, we educate sellers to get price right is we're looking at comps from 12 months ago, not what they sold at, but what they were listed at. Mm -hmm. And we really kind of make that a, a part of our focus in our, in our pricing strategy. And we're finding that those people are getting their houses sold. The other ones that don't listen to us want to chase their neighbor from six months ago. Uh, they're sitting on the market, then it's a race to the bottom. So we got to be really careful with that. And with buyers, it's an education thing because they're all listening to the news and all they hear is interest rates. And they're not realizing that they don't have to go $50,000, $70,000 over wave inspection, wave uh, uh, appraisal, and then name their firstborn kid after the seller. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of gone. Or uh, give their firstborn child to the seller in some, in some instances. cases. That might not be bad, but yeah. Um, which, by the way, I became a grandpa this year. Two oh, really? Oh, How old are you? I'm 53. And, well, you uh, look great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, my wife made me eat organic back when I had to have three jobs to pay for it. So, um, <laughs> so we, we, we eat well. But, um, but no, we had two granddaughters this year. My son had a, a daughter and so did my daughter. So we've been incredibly blessed this year. So it's, awesome. it's, it's really cool. It's good times. I don't know where I was going with that, but I like to brag on them. So. That's well, funny, I think dude. you it were going talking about kids. Yeah, I also think you wanted us to compliment you on your young, on your <laughs> boyish good looks. Come on, man. Look at this gray right here. <laughs> That's funny, man. Steve, what are you telling your team to do right now to prepare for 2023 in this in this shift? Because I don't well, it's hard to tell where we're going, but it doesn't look as bad right now. We could get way worse, but we could also get a little bit better. We're in the middle. Where, what are you telling your yeah. team to do? Well, one of the things I've always preached is we got to be different. We got to sound different than other brokers. We got to act different. And so differentiation is key for us. And I think where we're winning right now in that is in the dialogue game, you know, really how we show up and what we're saying to people, uh, just really trying to just not sound like everybody else. So we do a lot of portal leads. We've got, that's a big part of our business and we've got, you know, what I love about the portal leads is we've got about a 17 day average from the time we meet somebody till they're under contract. Wow. One out, one out of 10 times. So one out of every 10 portal leads, we're getting under contract within 17 days. That's huge. And so yeah, Denver's still really, really hot and uh, we're, we're flex here. There's only 20 something teams that are flex and we're fortunate to be on flex. So we're, it's been a very good partnership for us for sure. And so we've coached our agents on this process called driveway island driveway so they show up in the driveway and we have a presentation and we're talking a little bit about agency just enough to kind of get them curious about that and make sure we're covering ourselves and and then we get inside and then that house becomes our office and so we're looking at that kitchen island and you know if there's no cameras in that house and there's nobody waiting to get in uh, we're teaching our agents to like turn that into your office and have those go deeper in those those connections those conversations in the island interesting and then it's back to the driveway where we plan next steps and what we're going to do with them next. And get got it. So island is there. kitchen island. Yes, sir. Kitchen. Yeah. Kitchen island. And got then for it. sellers, we do a different process. It's um, this is what I teach. It's um, <clears throat> it's door, door, table, tour, door. So door, well, uh, say that five times fast. Yeah. Right. So door, table, tour, door. So we're teaching what, you know, when they answer the door, door table, tour, what our presentation is, take them to the table, go on the tour of the property, back to the table, out the door. So we're really breaking that down just in our dialogues. And we're using a lot of um, new dialogues, uh, really get, getting better on our questions, uh, getting deeper with people. And that's certainly been a big difference for us. What kind of questions are you asking? Because, you know, I think like it's important, especially with buyers, buyer agents are not asking enough questions. You know, they're just like, well, how many beds and baths do you want? Where do you want to live and how much you want to, you want to pay? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. A lot of them stop right, like right there. Yeah. For us, our favorite question is what do you know about the market right now? Oh, that's a and good that, one. And that opens up all kinds of things. You know, oh, I heard the market's really bad. I heard um, the market's really good. And it gets us at least know where their frame of mind is. And then we can go from there. It also helps you like question. fish. That is a very good question. It also helps you, I would assume, you know, figure out whether or not they're realistic. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, it's funny. The word realistic has become a norm around our office because I've always I've taken the spin of ready, willing, and able, and I call it W-A-R war, willing, able, and ready. Um, and that's the lens in which we look at prospects before we kind of decide how much time we're going in with somebody. Mm -hmm. Are they willing to 
follow us, take our advice, listen to us. Are they able to buy? And are they ready? Well, we added another R to that. So it's now war. And that fourth R is now, are they realistic? And so that's the new, the new thing that we look at is, uh, is this client, whether it's a buyer or a seller, are they going to be realistic? Otherwise, we're spinning wheels. We've got a buyer right now, $500,000 property. They want to offer three fifty. dollars We're like, oh my God. Oh my God. Like, honestly, not going not gonna to happen. Oh my not God. Gonna my question is, when are you coming out with your book of Steve-isms? Because you've got <laughs> driveway, <laughs> driveway, island, driveway, tour table, tour door, door table, door door. Uh, don't don't get me started on and then acronym. war. It's fun fact. My team has a drinking game about all my acronyms. <laughs> Dude. Love it. It's Next time we'll play that one. I didn't come prepared. <laughs> Deal. Um. So that's it. So that's, that's a great question. So what do you know about the market? Cause that can open up a whole bunch of other follow-up questions. Yeah. yeah I love definitely. That. What other questions have you noticed that in this market help in conversation with a seller or a buyer? Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing we're looking at too, is I, you know, it's the, the five D's, right. It's, it's, I call it the D's needs. It's, these are D D clients. They, they're needs based buyers. So we're getting really deep into, you know, the, the, the people that. <laughs> so good, dude. I sounds love these. like a, sounds like a joke. My 10 year old tells at school. What, except the it's, D's needs? Yeah. Except it's yeah. another word that starts with N. Oh, gotcha. Um, so I think those questions are really just trying to draw out needs versus wants right now. The wants based clients are, 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 are <laughs> kind of challenged, but the, the needs based, they got to do something. So those are. Yeah. Those are, and that's needs, good that you differentiate needs, that. needs yeah. are important, right? Needs versus wants. Yeah. There's a lot like of like needs based you're... clients. Okay. So hold on. Where do you go and find the clients that need to move, where are you gravitating to? Yeah, so a lot of it is, you know, we're doing a lot of targeting around people that have a house to, that, that's been in their house for 10 years or more, two stories. We're building a database very much demographically around that. Um, so mm -hmm. that's somebody we, we're anticipating. So we have a seller farm pond, if you will. And so we're very active in that. We've got a lot of people in the pipeline. This spring should be really good with that. And so that's one way is finding those, those people that are on that D where their kids have gone off to college, getting that degree. Uh, so those empty nesters are big, especially where we're at. We're in the community. Uh, it's called Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Uh, average home is about 20 years old. And oh, a lot okay. of people have been in the same house for a long time and, and they, they turn over really well here. So we're in a really sweet market for that. You got like but, probably a lot of, First time sellers um, or second or like first or second owners. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'd say, you know, Highlands Ranch is really transient. So there's not a lot of okay. first time sellers, um, but there are people that that's who we want now. Those people have been in 10 years plus, because what we find is they don't have a realtor relationship. That's really to speak of. So we're not really competing. We just got to get in first and, and, show that we're competent and build some rapport with them. And usually that goes really, really well for us with that type of client. Uh, they trust us, they like us, we're in the community and it works. Uh, you asked about other, other things. So we also do, we're very aggressive on our circle dialing around our listings mm -hmm. and also buyers that we went under contract or recently closed. We'll hit that whole neighborhood and we get business from that. Like we, we found so many listings and, and both buy sell listings and people re relocating and referral opportunities just from circle dialing. Um, probably the best case this year was actually the client was moving to Michigan, Milford, Michigan. And we called them and they said, oh my gosh, we just learned a contract. We bought a house in Michigan. We were just wondering who we're going to list our house with. When can you come over? It was a million, four million, five thousand, five hundred thousand dollar house off picking up the phone and just, and our script is really simple. Ring, ring, Colin, we sold your neighbor's house. Just wonder if you'd be open-minded to if the price was right. Would you consider selling your house? And most people say yes. And they'll say, but not for six months. And then they go into our database and it's just feeding that pond. Yeah. I was going to ask you, you kind of answered the question a little bit, but what is your, what is your everyday, um, team prospecting look like? Cause so you're doing mm, good question. It, you're doing the portal leads from where? Uh, Zillow and we do some realtor.com. Okay. And 
you just mentioned like circle prospecting. So like, what are all your different uh, channels of lead generation and prospecting? So Inspireds are alive again. So we're back oh, after yeah, wow. Inspireds game, uh, which we feel is going to be really fruitful. Uh, we have a lot of overpriced mm-hmm. listings and we're really prepared to have those conversations if we can get in front of those people. So um, mm-hmm. our team, we do a lot of the Tom Ferry stuff. I'm a Tom Ferry coach too, by the way. Fun fact. Oh, okay. Um, and it's a uh, five, five, four that Tom teaches. And so it's five new prospects a day that you connect with five people that you follow up with and four people in your database. So my team does a five, five, four as part of their morning routine. And where we're lacking a little bit is they're supposed to post two social media posts a day too, but Tristan's supposed to help me with that. <laughs> Let's go, man. I'm Tristan's like, you. I am. Let's go. Let's go. I, I, it's like, we're so busy doing other stuff. It's like, how do you become social media star? I just, it's just a lot of time. But. Dude, on the fly, man. Just, you know, on the fly. Just, they can do it anytime. Yeah. You know, they have gotten really good. And I think this has been a big thing for us too, is video texting. So not a, I don't think a lot of agents really are dialed no. into it. I, you know, they're still afraid of video and that's okay uh, for us. But our agents, they're picking out that phone and just shooting off a video text real quick. And it's getting connected People are you using are, bomb bomb or are you just using video on your phone no just apple uh iphone video we found yeah, it's video. very powerful yeah bomb bomb just slows down with the integration and the click of the link on the text versus or, or in the email then you're yeah you're right how to get opened love bomb bomb it's just not as fast as the video text yeah no i'm glad you, you're doing that do you do that for like you know what that leads me to another question when a zillow lead comes in you know, what is your process for that follow-up? Because you said one out of every 10 gets under contract within 17 days. So the follow-up must be pretty darn good. Yeah. You know, Zillow, they, they basically follow their best practices and it's taken a while for us to kind of get away from some of our old embedded things that we would do on a, on an initial call. Like we don't get into price. We don't get into qualifying. We're all about just getting them in the door, make, set the appointment. Um, meet them in the driveway. If anything's off or suspect, we'll cancel the showing. Um, but it's those calls are really easy. I, they want to see the house. Let's get together. You put down four o'clock. Four o'clock works. Great. We'll see you at the house. And then we de- verify the location that they're looking in, their motivation. And then we follow up like crazy right after we got the phone. We say our name three times uh, while we're talking to them so they remember us. And then when we get off the phone, we hit them with a text. Uh, and just confirm the appointment once we have the showing scheduled and who we are again. And it, we've got really high CSAT scores with Zillow. And, and that's because we, we are so um, adamant about saying our name all the time. That's really been good. So we have a lot more stickiness there. Um, but again, there's nine out of 10 that aren't ready to transact. And, but we have a, you know, we have got a process for them and it's a follow-up just like anything else. Mm-hmm. Was there was some secret formula to it. It's like everybody's different. So you just got to hit them like multiple different ways from text to video, even direct mail, handwritten notes, or I was at a party with some clients and, and I sold them a home like four or five years ago. And they announced to the whole mm-hmm. place. The reason they went with me is because I sent them a handwritten thank you card after I met That's them at awesome. the house, you know, so you just don't know, you got to kind of hit all those channels that you can without being annoying or, uh, icky, as I like to say, don't be icky. <laughs> All right. So Stephen, last thing here, what are you most excited about for 2023 that, that you think we should also be excited about? That's a good question. Well, I mean, there's two, two things I would say there. One from a micro level for real estate, I think the opportunities are really great. I think the market's very balance or balancing it's still a seller's market it really is in our market at least um so but i think the opportunities for buyers make it feel more balanced and i'm excited about that to see so many people not get homes and have to keep renting and just get priced out of the market so i feel like we're going to see home ownership again alive and well um those opportunities on a macro level i'm excited about the real estate industry as a whole because i feel like we're watching some dinosaurs go extinct and I'm okay with that. And I'm yep. all about the new models and, you know, equipping our agents and their teams to really elevate their brands. And I just think the old companies that are, you know, I won't mention any names, but I just feel like they don't get it. And it's too hard. They're too institutional to change. And you've got a lot of new players out there that I think are 
changes the landscape for us. And it gives us more freedom as brokers to really be exceptional in how we service our clients. I love we're, so, we're, sa we're saving money. We're building wealth. I mean, it's all, it's, these are all good things for the realtor. So you're looking for the opportunities. I think that that was the key on that opportunities in change. Isn't that all, isn't that how it happens every time? Yeah. Opportunities in change. It's crazy, man. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Steve, where do people go to find out more about you and where do people follow you since you want to grow your social media? Yeah, right. Thank you for that. So you can find me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm sorry, YouTube and TikTok at Nickerson5280 and Instagram is One Home Co. Perfect. Let me write that in there. Love it. Guys, Thanks, Steve. thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to meet you both and, and this, this venue and be able to share. So thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, well, I learned really a lot. It. This was a good one. I, I'm trying to remember everything you told us acronym wise. It's like we, we need a whole book for this, which it'll I love. be in the book. It'll be in the book. Driveway, <laughs> driveway Island Driveway, door, <laughs> door, tour, door. What? I'm already forgetting. <laughs> no, I'm forgetting. <laughs> so now it's it's door, table, tour, door. And, door, table, uh, tour, door. Yeah, exactly. And door, it, table, it, tour, door. <laughs> Let's go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Love Thanks. It. Thanks, guys. All right. Have a great yeah. night, Steve. Yeah. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. See you ya. too. All right.